After Edward I's conquest of Wales in 1282-83, he ordered the construction of a ring of castles to further tighten his grip over his new territory. Most of these castles were completed, but it was not so for one of his most ambitious projects, Beaumaris Castle. Long before the castle had been built, the Isle of Anglesey was of great importance to the consciousness of Wales. Gerard of Wales described the isle as fertile, and it had been called Mona, the mother of Wales. The abundance of crops that could be grown here made it of strategic importance, thus giving Edward a reason to build his last castle. Construction on the castle began in April 1295 on a flat and low-lying site immediately beside the Menai Strait. This area was described in contemporary records as Bello Mariscum in Latin or Beaumarie in French, meaning the beautiful marsh. As with Edward's other castles, the building work is well documented, recording the master of the works as James of St George and the clerk as Walter of Winchester. Regular accounts were sent to the Exchequer, detailing the number of workers employed and the cost of materials. Work on the castle moved at astonishing speed, and within the first six months, a massive sum of £6,000 had been spent. Today, that figure would be tens of millions. To ensure that the building work was to his liking, Edward stayed on site from the 10th to the 13th of July, 1295. The castle was built to a single coherent plan, which aided in the swiftness of the building work. The workforce was enormous, perhaps as large as 1,500 at the start, but after 10 months, more was required. James and Walter, in a report dating the 27th of February 1296, petitioned for more manpower, saying that they needed 400 more masons, 2,000 labourers, 200 quarrymen, 30 smiths and an unspecified number of carpenters. But a greater workforce needed more money, and workmen and soldiers on site were already going unpaid. This was due to the looming war with both Scotland and France. In the same report, James pleads, For God's sake, hurry up with the money for the works, as much as our Lord the King wishes. Without it, everything we have done so far will be for nothing. With Edward's invasion of Scotland and the following years of warfare, work on Beaumaris Castle slowed considerably. Only £100 of expenditure was recorded, rather than the £250 that Master James demanded. Because of this, payments for manpower and materials fell even further behind, and cash and food were in short supply, forcing James to seize supply carts from merchants without compensation. By this time, Edward had spent over a massive £11,000, and as work stalled, many important buildings were still far from finished. By 1306, next to no progress had been made, and the new constable, John of Metfield, drew up a damning report for the Council of the Prince of Wales, the future Edward II. This report listed the repairs needed, and that 35 of 49 crossbows were useless. Over the next decade, building work continued at a somewhat lesser pace and scale. This building programme was focused on completing the outer curtain wall. Records show that orders for numerous repairs were made, though few were actually carried out.
1321, a survey pointed out severe problems caused by the cessation of the building works. Many of the towers had no roof and were simply boarded out without lead coverings, and many buildings were still incomplete. With so much work needed to make the castle operational, it was impossible to estimate the cost for the castle's completion. Despite the castle's incomplete state, it saw action in late 1403 when it was besieged and captured by the Welsh under Owain Glendore. Eventually Glendore's rebellion was defeated and the castle fell back into English hands. Being far from power in London, Beaumaris Castle almost became forgotten and was mainly used as a prison. In a report made in 1534, it was stated that there was not a single chamber in the castle where a man could lie down dry. During the civil war of the 1640s, Beaumaris Castle was garrisoned by royalist troops and was seen as a potential landing site for Irish reinforcements. However, by 1646, Parliament had defeated the royal armies and the castle was surrendered by Colonel Richard Bullockerley in June. Anglesey revolted against Parliament again in 1648 and Beaumaris was briefly reoccupied by royalist forces, surrendering for a second time in October that year. After the war, many castles were slighted, damaged to put them beyond military use but Parliament was concerned about the threat of a royalist invasion from Scotland and Beaumaris was spared. Lord Thomas Bullockley brought the castle from the Crown in 1807 for £735, incorporating it into the park that surrounded his local residence, Barren Hill. By then, the castles of North Wales had become attractive locations for visiting painters and travellers, who considered the ivy-clad ruins romantic. Although not as popular as other sites in the region, Beaumaris formed part of this trend and was visited by the future Queen Victoria in 1832. Today, Beaumaris Castle is managed by Cadu, the Welsh Assembly's government agency for historic monuments, as a tourist attraction, with tens of thousands of visitors each year. What you see of the castle today was mostly built during the first two years of its construction. The changing political circumstances and the shortage of money meant that Beaumaris was to remain an unrealised dream. Even though Beaumaris Castle was never finished, it is still impressive and makes you wonder what it could have been. It is easy to spend a lot of time exploring the ruins and is a must visit for anyone who likes their history.